Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of iFi for the iPhone is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. With over 28 million high quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use the offer code I59. Hello and welcome to i5 for the iPhone episode 56, an episode that will forever go down in history as the one right before the new iPhones. Almost seems a little ridiculous to do a show today, but hey, we might as well get ready for your new iPhone with a bunch of new iPhone apps, right? That's what I've got. I'm Sarah Lane and it's Monday and the show must go on. Number one. We can't avoid it. Let's just quickly run down what's actually happening tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific time. We know Apple's holding an event. It's down at its Cupertino headquarters. I say down because it's south of here. We know the invites say this should brighten everyone's day, and they look like this. The obvious conclusion to draw from all these colorful dots is that, oh, I don't know, maybe they represent the colors of the new cheaper iPhone, dubbed the iPhone C by the media. Maybe. It's not a sure thing, though. Also not a sure thing, although very, very likely, is that the new more expensive iPhone, dubbed the iPhone 5S, will be available in black and white and white with gold casing, much like the white iPhone with silver casing looks now. We're also hopeful that all of these rumors of a fingerprint sensor are also true and that we'll see the next generation of iPhone locking and security tomorrow as well. What's interesting to me is how much emphasis Apple appears to be putting on its market share in Asia. Last week, the Wall Street Journal reported sources saying that Apple would start selling the cheaper iPhones on Chinese carrier China Mobile for the first time. Now, two other carriers, China Telecom and China Unicom, already carry the iPhone, but China Mobile is China's biggest carrier by a lot. 700 million subscribers. That's seven times bigger than Verizon in the US, just to put into perspective. We've also heard reports that Japan's largest mobile carrier, NTT Docomo, will also start offering the iPhone to its 60 million customers, also for the first time this fall. And of course, the strong likelihood that Apple is going to, for the first time, offer iPhones at various price points is just new territory for the company. And it's going to be fascinating to see how that impacts the company's foothold in markets where it's lost a lot of ground to Android-based competitors or just never had a big presence before. Game on! Number two. I am trying very, very hard to love a brand new app I came across over the weekend called Studio. The idea behind Studio is to create designs with a mixture of photos and, and text and shapes and logos and patterns. The app has over 500 free shapes and crops and fonts, photo filters, layer tools, social tie-ins. It's all about sharing your creations. Okay, so let's say I put together something I like and I'm ready to share. I publish it, meaning that it's added to my Studio feed along with the creations of the people I'm following. You're gonna this is all a very familiar model. The promise is, and anybody who watches i5 with any regularity would agree, I'm not a great artist. I'm not even a good one. So Studio has a cool feature where I can use somebody else's artwork as the jumping off point for my next creation. This reminds me of an app called Mixel. Remember Mixel? We talked about it in a previous episode of i5. It was bought by Etsy last year and doesn't have a social network anymore. But looking through some of the featured art here, people who actually possess creative talent can obviously make really, really cool stuff. I just wonder how Studio wins over those of us who don't get that excited about our works of art and don't really ever feel like sharing anything we make with the world because it sucks. The app is free though, and with certain art tools available as in-app purchases. Number three, I use my phone to pay for lots of things. I have my credit card saved with Square Wallet, an app I love so that I never have to bring my actual physical wallet to my neighborhood coffee shop. 
I also have my credit card saved with Postmates, which is a delivery service. So when the courier arrives at my front door, I don't need to have cash handy for a tip. Now, PayPal's latest app is aiming to be sort of a super app that competes with both companies. You can not only use PayPal to pay for things remotely, but you can also use the app to order food ahead, walk in, bypass the line at your favorite restaurant, and feel very superior. You can still send and request money via PayPal, of course. You can manage your account transactions. I pay for my rent this way, so I use PayPal for that. That, along with some special offers and bells and whistles, seems to make PayPal app kind of perfect, right? Well, here's the issue I have with, with, with this app. It's fully featured, but it's kind of all over the place. The menus are a little hard to navigate. There are certain features I, I, I kind of find buried. I still really prefer Square's app to the PayPal experience. Even though I use PayPal to pay for things on a regular basis, and my account is active. But please do draw your own conclusions here. Give PayPal a whirl and let me know why it's the best app you ever did see, if you actually do feel that way. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. At Shutterstock, you'll find the perfect image or video for your next creative project. I guarantee it. Whether it's for your website or a publication or some sort of an ad or a video you're putting together, you can choose from over 28 million high quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips. The company sources images from around the world and many contributors to Shutterstock are pro photographers and artists. This stuff looks good. Plus, Shutterstock reviews each image individually for content and quality before it ever gets added to its library. 10,000 images are added every day, so every time you visit, you'll always find something new. And Shutterstock makes it really, really easy. In fact, the company recently partnered with Facebook to provide advertising customers free access to all of Shutterstock images through Facebook's ad creation tool. This is a really great resources for local businesses or anybody looking for much more professional looking ads. Plus, the search tools are great. You can drill down by subject, by file type, by emotion, even gender, all sorts of good stuff. And if you're working within a group, you've got shareable light boxes. You can save images to a Lightbox gallery, and then your other team members can access them later. Of course, they've also got that award-winning iPad app. Search on the go and use it to display images during presentations. You can try Shutterstock today by signing up for a free account. You don't need a credit card or anything. Just start an account and start using Shutterstock. Once you decide to purchase, use the offer code I-5-9. That's I-F-I-V-E and then the number nine. And new accounts will receive 30% off any package. That's Shutterstock.com. And for 30% off new accounts, use the offer code I-5-9. And thanks to Shutterstock for their support of I-5 for the iPhone. Number four. Yesterday, a wonderful thing happened in the U.S. Football season started. And I, for one, am thrilled. In fact, I've already downloaded the new NFL mobile app, which is a combination of game highlights and live scores and team news and even a way to follow your fantasy football team if you've made one. The app's even better if you're a Verizon customer, which I just so happen to be. So even though I'm a cord cutter, yesterday I watched the 49er Packer game on Fox because I have an over-the-air HD antenna. Worked out great. But I can't do that for Monday Night Football because that's on ESPN, and that's a cable network that I don't get for free. With Verizon, I can pay five extra dollars a month. The app is free, but it's five dollars for premium access to Monday Night Football, as well as the NFL Red Zone and some other goodies. However, AirPlay won't work for a video. I actually tried already, and the app explicitly states it's a rights issue. So this is five dollars well spent if, let's say, you're traveling a lot or, or you're totally fine watching games on a tablet. I don't know, I'd never watch a football game on my iPhone unless I had to though. Even though the app's ad supported, the free version is worth a download, even if you're not world's biggest cowboy fan, but ever find yourself googling things like, did the cowboys win today? By the way, I hope in the future that answer will always be no. And finally, number five, I don't know about y'all, but I like to blame technology for helping me lose my mind. Like walking into a room and not remembering what I went in there for. Happens several times a day. We're all very distracted, right? It's tech's fault. 
Well, an app called Lumosity might actually help us. It was designed by a group of neuroscientists focusing on cognitive abilities to improve our memories, our attention spans, and overall brain performance through scientific brain workouts disguised as games. So once you get through a game and you aren't happy with how you performed, you can replay the game for better points, which in theory will also exercise the part of your brain that the game is designed to help, speed or memory or the like. Otherwise, you move on to another game. And Lumosity doesn't push you too much. When you've played enough games, the app congratulates you for the day, and you sort of go on with your life. After time, you're supposed to amass enough statistics about the games you're good at and the games you struggle with, and Lumosity will be able to give you more games that target the weaker parts of your brain. Now, this app is part of a larger service of tests and games, which you can upgrade to from within the app, but it's 80 bucks per year. That's worth looking into if you're really interested, but I'm not really. I'm content to stick with the free app and enjoy my brain teasers, because they're actually kind of fun. If it makes my brain just a little less Swiss cheesy, I think I'm winning. Hey, you ever hear or see of an app or trick on i5 and then you can't remember what it was later and then you feel really sad, almost destitute? Well, instead of ending it all, just hop over to our show notes at twit.tv slash i5. That's where all of our links live and also where you can subscribe to this fine show with the feed of your choice. Or just add our show to your favorite podcast app. Email us at i5 at twit.tv. Leave us a voicemail at 614 on i5 or send us a video with an app review of your own. I'm Sarah Lane, this is i5 for the iPhone, and when we next meet, our world will be a very different place. Go!